Have you ever been driving down a street and seen a speed limit that just doesn't make sense? Why is the speed limit 40 kilometers per hour here? Should it be? And should this street also be 40? Who decides this stuff and how? The historical way of setting speed limits and the method still used in most places in North America is the 85th percentile rule. This rule states that you build a road, call your lowest paid engineering intern, and send them out with a radar gun and a clipboard to record the speeds of drivers during a time of good weather and good visibility. Then you throw away the top 15% of speeds, and the highest speed left is rounded down and that becomes your new speed limit. This approach seems reasonable, until you think about it at all. This method means that 15% of all drivers are breaking the speed limit. So why the 85th percentile? Why not 90% or any other number? Why not just fire the intern and make shit up? But the bigger issue with the 85th percentile is that, like most things wrong with American traffic engineering, it's a 1960s metric designed for use on rural roads that was then applied to everything, from highways to city streets and everything in between. To understand the problem better, it's useful to review the road versus street definitions used by strong towns. I have a whole video about this, but here's a quick refresher. This is a road, a high-speed connection between two places. It is a simplified environment with minimal driveways, side streets, or crossings, and often no access for pedestrians or cyclists. Using this language, a highway is a type of road. This is a street, a complex environment with businesses, houses, and lots of people outside of cars. This is a strode, a street road hybrid that is dangerous, inefficient, and expensive. Strodes should never exist, but for now, let's stick to streets and roads. The 85th percentile rule may be arbitrary, but it, or something like it, is not necessarily a bad way to set the speed limit of a road. One of the elements of safety on a rural road is that all drivers should be driving at around the same speed. When speeds are consistent, most drivers are traveling together, there is minimal overtaking, and therefore minimal opportunities for conflict. This is based on research of US rural roads in the 1960s. The problem comes when this design approach for a rural road is applied to a street. Unlike a road, a street is not a thoroughfare. It is a destination, a place for productive city life. A street will be lined with houses or businesses, it will also have pedestrians and cyclists who aren't being considered at all in that 85th percentile. A good street is complex, and that complexity is what makes for a pleasant, attractive, and productive street. And a good street is not compatible with high-speed traffic, so speeds should be low. Many cities in the US and Canada design dangerous high-speed streets, or rather strodes, right through their city centers. And then they wonder why pedestrian fatalities are so high and why all the downtown shops went out of business. In fact, the very best streets are those with almost no motor vehicles at all. In short, moving motor vehicles is not the primary purpose of a street. So setting speed limits to whatever drivers feel like driving is a terrible way to determine vehicle speeds on a street. Speed is the single biggest factor in the fatality of car crashes. Well, it's actually momentum, which is velocity times mass, but that's not important right now. The higher the speed, the more likely it is that a crash will be fatal. This is especially true for cyclists and pedestrians. At higher speeds, it also becomes more difficult for a driver to react in time and for a vehicle to stop in time to avoid a collision. And as modern vehicles become more powerful and safer for their occupants, Drivers feel even more confident driving at higher speeds, which is making the issue of speeding even worse. So the best thing to do to reduce road fatalities is to lower the speed that vehicles are driving. This is why you're seeing cities all over the world reducing their speed limits. And to be clear, this is a good thing for multiple reasons. In fact, even traffic congestion actually improves when speed limits are lowered, but I'll talk about that in a future video. Unfortunately, most cities do this completely wrong by just putting up a new sign. Now, to be fair, just changing the sign does have a small effect on average speeds, and it's better than nothing, but it's not a permanent solution, and here's why this is a problem. Driving is a subconscious activity. As much as we'd like drivers to pay attention all the time, we would get exhausted if we had to always consciously focus on driving. 
Humans just aren't built for that. Well, some humans are, but we call them professional race car drivers. Have you ever been driving somewhere on the weekend and suddenly found yourself driving to work without realizing it? Yeah, that's why. And this is the fundamental problem with speed limits. Most people don't consciously think about what speed they're going. They're not obsessively checking their speedometer or reading every speed limit sign they pass. The vast majority of drivers will drive at whatever speed feels comfortable for the road they're driving on. This is what's known as the design speed of the road. And if that design speed doesn't match the posted speed limit, then we have a problem. Here is an example of a street, actually more of a strode, that has a very high design speed. The street is wide and straight, there are lots of wide lanes for motor vehicle traffic. Everything about this street is telling drivers to drive quickly. In fact, the only thing that's slowing down drivers here at all is this traffic light, which is often red. But the speed limit here is 40 kilometers per hour. Unsurprisingly, almost nobody is driving at that speed, so they put up this flashing sign to snap people out of their subconscious driving and remind them to slow down. Now, this is a complicated street. The street is lined with houses, there's a school here too, and there are pedestrians and cyclists. The speed limit should be low here, probably 30 kilometers per hour or lower, but putting up a sign like this is not the right way to do it, because it doesn't match the design speed of the street. There's an even more ridiculous situation that's common in rural areas of the US and Canada. Here we are coming into a town along a 90 km per hour road. It's unsafe to drive this fast through the town, so now the speed limit is 70. And now it's 50. But there's literally nothing done to change the geometry of the road. In fact, a bit farther along, the road is even wider to accommodate street parking, so any driver who's not constantly looking at their speedometer will continue driving too fast. So once again, many towns put up flashing signs like this one to remind drivers to slow down, like me in this case, because I missed the sign. Literally every town like this in the US and Canada have residents who complain about drivers speeding through their town. And the reason for this is that North American traffic engineers are stubbornly stuck in the world of 1960s traffic planning. This is a topic that is explored in detail in the new book, Confessions of a Recovering Engineer by Strongtown's founder, Chuck Marone. In one chapter, the book states, to be safe, the street must communicate the real level of risk to the driver. In other words, the driver must feel discomfort driving in a manner that is unsafe. The truth is that many drivers will not slow down because of signs or speed limits. They'll slow down either because they don't feel safe or because they're afraid of damaging their car. What this means though, is that we can take this subconscious driving reality and use it to our advantage by designing the street or road for the speed that we want, which is exactly what traffic engineers do in civilized countries like Sweden or the Netherlands. Here's what it looks like to enter a small town in the Netherlands. The road is visually narrowed by the dotted lines and trees are planted closer to the road. Then there is a speed bump and the road becomes so narrow that only one car can pass at a time. Road design like this immediately triggers a subconscious response. Everything about this road design suggests low speeds and you don't need a flashing sign to tell drivers to slow down. This approach is used all over the Netherlands. Here is a country road with an 80 km per hour speed limit. Coming up on the left are a few driveways to some farmhouses that might be a potential source of conflict. But instead of arbitrarily posting a lower speed limit, there are trees that have been planted close to the road. This immediately signals to the driver that they need to pay attention at this location. One of the great things about driving in the Netherlands is that it's rarely necessary to look at the speed limit. The road design takes care of that for you. Here's a 50 km per hour road. And on this street, it feels right to drive slower. Here we are approaching a pedestrian crossing and the street design suggests we should slow down and pay attention. And this is very clearly a slow residential street where it feels right to drive 30 km per hour. The old approach was to design the street, check the 85th percentile speed, and set the speed limit accordingly. But the modern, safer approach is to choose the speed limit that's appropriate for the context of the street, and if drivers are consistently going faster than that, then the street design should change until drivers are going the desired speed. It's not the 1960s anymore. We have decades of data that can tell us with fairly good precision what speed a typical person will drive on a given road or street. 
If you make it wide, simple, and straight, most people will drive quickly. If you make it narrow, complex, and twisty, most people will drive slowly. This isn't rocket science, and several cities have already adopted these practices, but the outdated methods are still being followed by the majority of traffic engineers in the US and Canada. We can't keep doing this. It's time to stop blindly following the guidelines of the previous century and design the streets to match the right speed limit, and not the other way around. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon who pay me to make the speed limit signs flash. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to bonus videos, visit patreon.com slash notchesbikes.